Hello everybody, my name is Mr. C. Ferrante, and today I'll be taking a look at The Crimson Wastes. Difficulty, 4 out of 5. The Crimson Wastes provides few resources for survival, nor are they under the protection of the Lanterns. Entity Count, 2 out of 5. While uncommon, encounters with hostile entities have been documented in The Crimson Wastes. Chaos Gradient. 3 out of 5. The Crimson Wastes are stark and lonely, but are prone to rare yet harsh fluctuations in weather. Bassett Fraser Index. 3 out of 5. A nearly serene wasteland, expansive and strangely beautiful, but not without its acute and prevalent hazards. Stars, Silence, and Salt. Above you, the Crimson Borealis roars. Underfoot the white salt, which drifts down like snow, tears up your boots, and shifts like loose shale. The air is crisp and cold to the touch, and dry, immensely so. You have discovered the Crimson Wastes, a land very true to its name. Survival here is strenuous at best. Darkness blankets the entirety of the level. The lanterns do not stray this deep into the Crimson system. The only relief from the internal midnight is the haunting glow of the aurora, and the hanging, dreadful stars which many travelers have claimed watch the wastes with unblinking omniscience. This feeling of being watched by the stars is eerily common. It's an unsettling awareness discerned by nearly all who traverse the wastes. Without the presence of the lanterns, entities fester widely spread across the salty plains and nestled in the thickets of evergreens lie shadows and beasts who hunger for a fresh warm meal. Do not traverse the wastes without caution, lest you're fated to encounter such a creature, and never converse with an owl. Indifferently inhospitable. The weather is nearly always calm and still, with a small drizzle of salt drifting from the skies. However, extremely rare cases of intense weather systems have blown across the expanse. These spikes in weather are known as salt storms, when ridges of pressure create towering walls of salt which sweep across the wastes in an unescapable wave of destruction. Luckily, salt storms can be seen billowing in the distance from hundreds of miles away, giving travelers facing these rare occurrences time to seek or create shelter. The most intense recorded storm lasted several cycles, an unprecedented storm which completely changed the face of the wastes in its wake. The wind and salt can erode anything standing in its path. Humans directly exposed to the wrath of a storm are shredded apart as if sandblasted or buried underneath the brine, surely perishing. What's more, no food grows here, nor is any water found potable. The saline nature of everything in the wastes leaves little for human sustenance. The Crimson Wastes, being so casually hostile to any form of human presence, has been largely unexplored. However, the discovery of the enigmatic ruins have brought foolhardy groups to this level out of curiosity again and again. These mysterious structures have been found littered across the wastes in shallow valleys and at the base of mountain ranges, described by some as abodes with ornate stone construction. They are tucked away in safe spaces that are untouched by the winds of salt storms, and so have been preserved for unknown millennia. Who or what created these structures is entirely unknown. Many have died trying to study them. The ruins are just as barren as the wastes and offer little in the means of survival. For the sake of humanity, do not find yourself among the dead by chasing these lost relics. Expedition Log Excerpts The following excerpts from Expedition Logs illustrate the nature of the Crimson Wastes through first-hand account. In Search of the Mantis, Stonewall Exploration Crew Christina Javrik We do it all for Ophelia. We always have to do it for Ophelia. He's out there, she says. Pleads, insists. I can feel it. He's there, in the ruins, calling out to me. 
the mantis. I've about had it with these wild snipe hunts. Ophelia is almost a grown woman now, and affliction or not, it's about time she starts acting like it. Actions have consequences, nothing comes from nothing, and I am tired of risking the Stonewall's safety on her ramblings of the mantis. But lo, we found ourselves making the trek to the wastes regardless, hoping to track down the mystery of those ruins like so many idiots before us to find the source of Ophelia's premonitions, the source of the voices in the poor girl's head. If you've never been to the wastes, I'll elaborate this hell. You can taste it before you see it. Like licking brine, the salt gets onto your lips before anything. It's in the air. It permeates everything. I'm sure if you breathed it in long enough, you'd simply preserve yourself and become a crusty old pickle. The second the salt hits, your stomach churns too. Makes you want to turn heel and march right back the way you came. But we do it for Ophelia. And so we pressed on, eventually poking our heads out of the ground and into the dry air of the crimson wastes. The second thing you notice is the silence. It's so quiet that you hear yourself breathing, your clothes crinkling, your boots grinding and crushing salt. You hear your footsteps all the way through your body. It's unnerving. It makes you realize you don't belong, loud, unwanted, alien. And then you remember that you're not the only living thing out here. Under the watchful presence of the lanterns, it's easy to forget the monsters that exist outside the forest. You cross the threshold, leave the lanterns behind, and enter their world. It makes you feel like prey the instant you realize it, because that's exactly what you are. If the mantis truly was out here, you'd imagine it is just as terrible as the hungry entities prowling in the darkness. The paranoia sets in, and you imagine sets of crimson glowing eyes in the corners of your vision every time you turn your head, and in the penumbra of every shadow. It's enough to drive you mad. But we do it for Ophelia. Despite the roiling fear twisting knots in my stomach, we started walking. The Stonewall expedition resulted in the loss of one citizen of humanity, Heedley Sue, missing in action. You will be sorely missed. The Prayers of the Wastes, Salt Mining Lauren Stillman, it's a meditative experience, really. Coming to the expanse and bearing witness to the great crimson skies above, the stars see you just as you see them. I assure you of this. You feel the truth of the world open up to you with all of your senses, and it feels you as well. Let the Borealis judge your soul. Let it cleanse you of sin. Let the great astral skies take away your impurities. Bury it all in salt. It is important to give thanks to the salt, for it comes from the heavens, and each bucket we take should be honored with prayer to the wastes, for without this salt, much of our life in the forest below could not exist. Give thanks and be humbled. I feel that everyone should see the wastes at least once in their lives, to understand that there is more to the world than you know, to feel the open air, to taste the salt, and to offer yourself to the stars. We are all just grains of salt upon the winds of change. Mining salt from the wastes has become a necessary part of life for citizens of the forest, as there are no other known methods of obtaining the precious resource. Travel to the wastes is not for everyone, yet some might find the environment spiritually compelling. As more archiving is completed, more relevant information will become present here. Entrances and Exits the Crimson Wastes lay deep above the Crimson Forest in a most peculiar manner. Due to its relative position to the forest, the Wastes is often called the roof of the level below it, and sometimes its basement as well. Fissures in the ground found in the forest may run distant and far into the soil, resulting in abyssal cavernous openings to the Wastes on the other side. Midway through these fissures will the gravity flip, letting travelers know when they have reached the threshold of the two connected levels. In much the same way, if one were to dig deep enough into the ground of the waste, you would surely pop up in the forest below. In the strange reality of the crimson system, up would be down and down will be up. 
with gravity always pulling you towards the nearest flat surface, alternating as it pleases in its surreal transient manner. Are the wastes above the forests or below it? Such things will not be known until we discover the true nature of the Crimson System. It is unknown what lies above the Crimson Wastes among the stars, above the aurora, or why a drizzle of salt endlessly falls from the ominous heavens. Perhaps that knowledge is privy to none but the stars themselves. If only we could ask them their secrets.